Hi, everybody. This is Scott McLeod. Welcome to another episode of the Coronavirus Chronicles. I'm lucky to have with me Michael Walker and Sean Beaverson. Michael is the Secondary Digital Learning Specialist at Edina Public Schools in Minnesota. Sean is the personalized, oh, I already forgot it, personalized learning specialist for elementary, something like that, right? <laughs> Good. Sean, I'm sorry. I blew yeah, digital, he does it all. I don't know. Okay. Don't worry about it. Great. All right. So two awesome uh, ed tech folks from uh, one of my former states, Minnesota. Really glad to have the Adina folks with us today. Uh, Sean and Michael, why don't you just start by telling us what does learning and teaching look like in Adina right now? Well, we had the benefit of having some infrastructure in place with uh, our third through fit, uh, 12th grade having devices, although third through fifth were in the classroom. Um, 6, 12 were uh, one to one. Um, and then we had a two to one ratio with our K one, two kids. And the other aspect is we had um, some set uh, learning management systems in place with Seesaw for K one, two and Schoology three through five, uh, 12. But um, our third through fifth grade, when we started this process hadn't really uh, embraced it as much, that learning management system. And so Sean did some really heavy lifting and maybe he can talk about that. Yeah, well, so what does teaching and learning look like in Edina? Um, I think it's a great question. And I think we have our aspirational goals and then we have the reality of the pandemic and the emergence happening. So we're starting to see some of those aspirational pieces really take off as far as uh, how content is designed and delivered. Uh, our teachers um, becoming a lot more confident in their ability to do this online, beginning to understand uh, the routines that are useful for them as teachers and then routines for the students. And there's a lot of feedback from our teachers going on about that. We at the elementary level meet as grade level teams on Friday. And so there's been a lot of um, acknowledgement of the degree of collaboration that has happened and then the relief in finding some routine. That's the aspirational part. On the reality part is that, uh, you know, kids are starting to feel the wear and tear of this emergency situation as well. And so we're starting to see, to some degree, some attrition that we're trying to figure out and deal with. Yeah. Uh, we still haven't figured out what, uh, you know, um, how our aspirations actually live in the student's home. So if our teachers are developing these incredible lessons, is that a 10 minute experience? Is it a half hour experience? Is it two days? What does that look like? And how do we learn uh, how to better connect with the home so that we have a clearer understanding of what that actually looks like? So I'd say we're still in this very much this um, flux world of like, we've, we've gotten teacher efficacy way up Mm -hmm. And now we need to get some fam family efficacy. And then we're running into the reality of the end of the school year when people are uh, tired in so many different ways. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I wonder if you all could share with us a couple of examples of what you mean when you say the aspirational aspect. Like, what are you striving for in the school district with the recognition that, you know, for many of us, we may not be there yet? Yeah, so I think the aspirational piece is to continue the degree of learning that was going on in the classroom. And so uh, where that runs into some, you know, some of the struggle is the reality of the experience of the classroom teacher is more accustomed to a brick and mortar setting, particularly at the elementary level, right? And so, so that we're seeing incredible, just incredible lessons. There's lessons that are being put together, the amount of time that's being put into them that are incredibly well paced put together, um, but they're reliant on skills that don't always transfer in this brick and mortar to online version, again, particularly at the elementary level. Impressive work, uh, but they, they might be over, what's the word? Over, over shooting the coverage? What's that when you run past the ball? Outkick the coverage, yeah. Yeah, there might be outkicking the coverage yeah. a little bit. Gotcha. Michael? I, I think, yeah, for secondary, um, what's really been interesting is we've actually, uh, even with what we call attendance-based assignments, uh, we're seeing higher attendance overall year to year from this year over last year. Um, and so 
you know, Edina has a pretty strong tradition of being academically oriented. And so whether it's families, et cetera, pushing that uh, to happen, you know, we're in the mid to high 90s as far as attendance every day, which is pretty phenomenal during this. Um, and we recognize that that's definitely an outlier. But as far as what's happening in class, um, we are seeing everything from uh, teachers utilizing uh, synchronous opportunities for some lecture, uh, lots of screencasting happening. Um, and, and we really stressed at the beginning and as we were training and talking about it, the idea of asynchronous versus synchronous, utilizing synchronous as much as possible to help support social emotional and connect with kids and more asynchronous as far as learning goes. But even our kids have said they really appreciate some of those synchronous sessions where they can pop questions in the chat. And if they've got it, they've got the flexibility to say, okay, I'm done, I can leave. And the kids that actually need a little bit more help, they can stick around and get that help from the teachers. So that's one of the things that we've seen. Absolutely. You know, one of the things I'm hearing from a lot of school leaders is that they're worried that um, some of the robust learning and teaching that they had happening in schools has reverted back to some fairly low level factual recall of procedural regurgitation during this emergency time. Um, because it seems to be the easiest kind of learning to push out and collect. Do you all think that it's possible to do some of that deeper learning work even in this sort of scenario? Yeah, in fact, when I say um, out kicking the coverage, whatever that saying is, uh, <laughs> what it is, what I really think what it is is our teachers striving to do that deeper learning stuff and trying to figure out the model. Again, at elementary where the kids are less independent um, they require a little bit more support. And so one of the things that I think is a highlight and a moment to be proud of is that um, our teachers are absolutely trying to figure out how to get to that deeper level learning things. And in some cases, the resiliency to get there is just a little bit more challenging, but it's been a real interesting thing uh, to watch. So like Mike had mentioned, the development of the organic understanding and development of asynchronous versus synchronous learning. When it began at the elementary level, I'm going to deliver lessons this way. And then what it quickly became was this is just going to be a way for us to connect as a group to have our morning meetings and things. And so you've really seen um, that need and drive for the human connections be increased and highlighted through this. And in that work has been, okay, so how do we get to some things that are interesting, some things that are deeper level learning, and then recognize that that environment that the kids are in is going to be different. And so how do we get, how do, again, how do we figure out, is this a 30 minute deeper learning activity or is it, is it two days? And if it's two days, is that okay? Because it used to be, we'd have to get that done in a day and move to the next thing. And then the other question that's come up recently that I'm, that I'm actually pretty excited about is that it, interdisciplinary work, recognizing that um, we can't have uh, our specialists developing these great lessons um, parallel to what's going on in the homeroom section because it, the kids can't endure all of those lessons. And so now the conversation is, how are we gonna stack these things and use them in those, you know, that old, that really brand new idea called interdisciplinary work. So that's, <laughs> that to me is exciting yeah. that that is beginning to show up in the conversation pretty regularly. Well, cool. Michael? I, yeah, I think the other piece of that is that assessment has had to change. And so uh, because of test security, whatever, and so thinking different ways about it. So, uh, for example, some of our teachers are still doing the big projects that they, they had in place. We've got a great uh, 2030 uh, sustainable goals project that is happening still at seventh grade. So eighth grade is still doing some other things. High school is looking at more project-based assessments as ways to assess student learning. And, and, um, and so I think that's been a, po a positive shift. And because of AP testing, being different, it has freed people up for different experiences. Like uh, one of our history teachers brought in a 100-year-old World War II vet who had been on Omaha Beach on D-Day 
to do a Google Meet with his class and have conversations and, and kids asking questions that would have never happened right. had this not uh, happened. And so people are trying to find ways to uh, afford the positive aspects and, and do some pivoting that way. I think also the other pivot is towards more uh, proficiency-based progress as opposed to um, everybody's at the same place at the same time. Right. That In that fact, shift has to, ha has to happen. Right. I was just going to say, there's no way we get out of the fall or get our fall started without uh, having some degree of proficiency base built into it because there's going to be no way to know where the kids are starting, which all is great. I mean, these things all lend to, you know, things that we've been hoping for, just getting everybody as adept in the technology as we did in the short amount of time that we did has led to this. We've been talking about it for 10 or 15 years now since the first, what do you know? What did you know? What was the name of the video? The did you know video back in the day, right? We've been having this conversation for 12 years. And so it's certainly has accelerated the, uh, the, the pathway forward, but uh, but our superintendent's calling, so I feel like we should probably go. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, thanks for your time today. That's the Diner Public Schools. Michael and Sean, thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Bye.